Hello YouTube, I'm APC, and today I'm making the second half of my Parallax Effect series. There are only two videos in the series. The first one is where I talk about the concept of Parallax scrolling, as well as um, a little bit of the logic of how I kind of make it work. And in this video, I will be talking about the coding behind it. I'm going to go in GameMaker and I'm going to code it so you can see everything. If you uh, would prefer not to watch the first part, that's fine. Um, you'll just probably get more out of it if you watch the first part, but you should still be able to follow this video if you do not understand all of the logic behind it. So that's what we're going to do today. That's what we're going to do today. This is the finished version of the game, and you can see that it's working because the backgrounds are scrolling at a different speed than the than the view which gives the illusion that it's has it's um, further away in space. All right, so let's get started. This is the finished version right here, but if I delete this, we'll be back at the beginning. So um, without that, all it is is a basic platformer. If you do not know how to make a platformer, that's okay. Um, you can either look up one of my tutorials or look up somebody else's tutorial. There's tons and tons and tons of good platformer tutorials out there. So shouldn't be too hard to find something for that. If you, however, wish to stay here, I have all of my platforming related code written right here. So you can just copy that down. I've never written it all at one place like that before, but I think it looks kind of nice, you know, just 12 concise lines of stuff. All right, and then another thing that you need to do, to do is make the view follow the player. So in order to do that, you go to the view, make sure the view is enabled, make sure it's visible, and down here, make it follow the player or your yeah your player object. And then we have our basic platformer. And now let's go ahead and start with the parallax section of this video. So um, let's see, I've already got pre-made pre -made art. So I got some art for the rolling hills in the background, and I've got art for the houses. I spent a little bit more time than I did in the previous video working on this stuff, but still not much, so it still doesn't look too good. I'm partic particularly proud of how my little lumberjack here turned out, but oh well, it's still not very good. So yeah, got I got two backgrounds which we're going to do, be using for the parallax effect. Now um, I'm going to make a new object. I'm going to call it oh par parallax, and then I'm going to go in the creation event and we're going to set our, set everything up. So I'm going to be creating a number of arrays here. Um, the first array is going to, I'm going to call back, and these can represent all the backgrounds that we're using. So the first one is going to be the first one we're, we're going to be drawing, which one that's furthest away, or the one that's the biggest, I suppose, and that's going to be the S hills in this case. And I didn't call it S hills, I called it back hills. Yeah, that's it. And the other background is going to be the houses. So I'm going to call that back houses, and we have our backgrounds array done. Now the next array I'm going to do is the real widths. So um, a differentiation which I made in the my initial um, derivation video is we have the width um, in the v in the view or the width of the image, which we can you know we can just simply see right here they have their own width. And in addition to the width of the image, we have their real width in in the world that we have. All right. So of course mountains don't seem that big looking at them, but they are much bigger than they appear. The only reason they appear small is because they're so far away. So here we're saying how big they really are. So um, let's think about how big our hills are. So I'm just going to do this in terms of how big our current view is. So you know our view is uh, the width of our view is UW view, and we're going to say the mountains are something like ten times wider than that. Just throwing out numbers, and then um, let's do the real width of our other layer, the houses, I'm going to call this width, actually not widths. And this one, I'm going to say, let's see, I'm going to say that's twice as wide as our view. Okay? And something I need to mention about the houses, um, well, first off, the background is the same width as my view. I'm, I have my view set to 480 pixels, but my houses are only half the view. So, and, and when I'm referring to these things in the array, I'm saying if they took up the entire view, how wide would they be? But in this case, they only take up half the view. So I'm going to need to multiply this by how many times this would fit in the entire view to make it work for my math and all that. So to do that, I'm going to say 
Um, I'm going to multiply that by the width of our view divided by the width of the image, which is background get width. And we're talking about back one right here. Doesn't hurt. If you want to be safe, you can just take this little thing right here and multiply it by every single area and make sure you have the corresponding number in there each time. So zero right there. All right, now we have our real width, the width that these things are in the world rather than the width of our image. Now we're going to calculate the dx values. So when I say dx, the definition of that is how much are these background are these images shifted for each pixel that the view is shifted. So I'm going to use a, use a loop for this because they're we're going to be the same, doing the same calculation for each one. So I'm going to just to make it a little easier. I'm going to loop through all all of our images. Let's see. So I'm going to start i at zero, and I'm going to do it while i is less than the number of backgrounds that we have. And the number of backgrounds is array length 1D um, back. So array length 1D tells us how many elements there are in an array. So we have two elements in our backgrounds array. So this will be two. Um, and then we do i plus plus. There we go. All right, so we're looking for each background. And for each background, we're going to calculate what the corresponding dx is. So the, the way this calculation works is we're going to figure out what percent if we move by one pixel, what percent of the real width is going away, and then figure out that, and then turn that percent back into pixels in terms of our view width. So the proportion of the real width, width which is going away each time, is going to be equal to one divided by the real width. So if the real width is five, then and we move by one pixel, then 20% or 0.2 of the real width is going away. That makes sense. So that's where that comes from. So this will give us our proportion. And then we multiply that by the view width to represent how much goes away in the actual view. All right. And that's all for our calculations. Now we just need to draw everything. So let's go into the draw event. And I'm going to go ahead and draw all of our backgrounds. So I'm going to loop the backgrounds again, do the same thing as it did in the creation event. So our i equals 0, continue while it's less than our array length. 1D um, back, that's what I called it. And then I'm going to increment i. I don't need those. All right, and then for each for each iteration, I'm going to draw the corresponding background. So I'm going to say draw background, the ith background um, at. Let's see, I'm going to draw it just on top of the view. So view x view, view x view, view y view. Okay, and then if I throw O parallax into our room right there, we should have these backgrounds drawn in the background. If that is, we did not get an error, which tends to happen sometimes. I actually haven't gotten an error working on this yet. But oh well. I was going through a little quickly. So it says missing a parenthesis somewhere in here. And I see I have two there. But I do not have two here. And that'll do it. Yeah, this was kind of this code small that I can kind of look look through it real quick. But generally, you'd want to actually read the error and see where it happened because it only tells you exactly where it happened. But anyway, okay. So now we have our background kind of drawn. It doesn't move with the view, but we don't want to just yet. This is how we made it. Um, the next thing I want to take care of is our houses. So our houses only take up half the view, but I want them to be continuously duplicated to fill up the entire view. So to do that in our draw event, we're going to need a nested loop. So um, we're going to loop through each background to draw them, and then for each background, we're going to continuously draw them until they fill up the entire screen. So I'm going to do a, uh, another loop called the variable we'll call xx, and we'll start that at the x view because that's where we're going to start drawing them, and we're going to continue drawing them until the x view is all the way on the right of the screen, or while it's less than. Uh, view x view plus view w view. All right, and then each time I'm going to increment it by whatever the width is of our image background. So plus equals uh, background get width back i. So that way, whenever we draw a new one, it'll be drawn on the right side of the old one. So that way, yeah, that, that's how it works. And then here I'm going to put x x instead of view x view so that's actually drawn at the position where I want it to be drawn and now our background should loop our houses are looping 
They're still not moving though, so we'll go ahead and change that. Uh, if I go back into o Parallax, um, hmm. All right, so I want to um, shift them by some offset. All right, so I'm gonna call it var offset. So how much is offset is gonna depend on the position of the view, where, where the camera is, all right? So of course when the camera's at zero, I want everything to be at zero. So zero is kind of the primary place, but for every pixel the the camera moves away from zero, we want these to move in the opposite direction away from zero. So let's see. So um, I have view x view, which is how many pixels the camera has moved away from zero. And I'm gonna multiply that by dx sub i, which is how far that particular background moves for each pixel that the view moves. All right, and then we want the view. The sorry, we want the background to move in the opposite direction of the view. So we move to the right. Everything else goes away on the left side of the screen, basically. So to make it opposite, I'm going to make sure I subtract offset right there. All right, so we calculate how much it's offset, and then we subtract that right here, and that should be it for our parallax effect should be, in theory, be it for our parallax effect. Uh, off of a set, off of a set, okay. There we go, that fixed that. Typos, nobody's resistant to them. Alright, I move to the right. You can see we have the houses and the um, lush hills uh, going away to our left, and the houses are moving faster than the mountains, which makes sense because the houses are closer to us. And the mountains are bigger. So, there you have it. Hope you found this helpful. This is how you make a parallax scrolling effect in your game. Um, as a challenge, it might be a good idea for you guys to try and do this um, in the vertical direction as well. So, you know, if I have a platform where I'm not only moving from side to side, but I'm also moving up and down through the platforms, then you, you, could, you might want to have a vertical effect in there as well. So that'll be a good thing for you guys to try. And that's my challenge to you to see if you understand this. So um, with that, I will see you guys in the next tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this.